Oh no, it's good. Okay. So we're using the Puritan ventilator, um, which is a regular ventilator we use for ordinary ventilation, but we're using it in the non-invasive mode. So when you first go to the setup, it has invasive and non-invasive. Okay, so we are using the non-invasive mode. And then we're on pressure support, and we're on 12 over 5 at 45% FIA2. So normally I would accept that. And here's the patient. She's getting, um, a, a, she had a respiratory rate of uh, 14, a tidal volume of 570, 5 of PEEP, 12 of the inspiratory pressure, 5 of the expiratory pressure, 60% FiO2. There is a filter that's put in on the in on the in inflow from the ventilator. This is coming out of the ventilator. This is the uh, on the inspiratory loop which goes to the patient. Uh, and then when it comes back, there's another filter on the expiratory loop. So this is a closed system. Okay. Shoot from the side only here, just for HIPAA. We put a little uh, tape over the pop-up uh, uh, valve that's on the end of the mask here. And so the only source of leak is from the side. But this is a cushion mask, uh, and so there's very little leak associated with this. Uh, and it, we are in a uh, negative pressure room and we have appropriate PPE on, so this is uh, uh, definitely safe. Um, and as you can see, we've avoided having to intubate this patient for over two days, despite a PF ratio less than 100. This patient looks very comfortable. We also, uh, when we take her off the BiPAP, then we use the high flow machine. This is the high flow machine, and <clears throat> you adjust the flow and keep in between 20 and 30 degrees per minute. Uh, we adjust the FiO2, which is somewhere between 21 and 100% FiO2, depending on our O2 sat, and then this is the temperature button. So, um, and when we use the high flow, as you can see, there's a mask here. We will put the high flow nasal cannula in over her nose, and then we will put just order a sur surgical mask uh, over the high flow uh, to minimize the amount of mobilization. So, Dr. Feeney? Do we need, so do we not need to have a HEPA filter on the expiratory limb of the ventilator as well? So I'm going to let uh, Adrian explain that. He's a respiratory therapist here in the ICU. So Adrian, uh, you want to answer that question for us? We, these filters, all the filters come with, uh, with, with filters at the end of the, the expiratory limb anyway. Um, COVID or not, all our patients could have some type of uh, uh, disease process that can infect another patient. So we always want to keep our vents safe so that when we uh, use it for somebody else, um, we're not reinfecting some, another patient that, you know, um, with, with what the previous patient had. So yeah, they always have filters. And as a respiratory therapist, Adrian, do you feel safe with this setup? I mean, we're in here with BiPAP with the COVID patient. Do you feel like you're, you're protected as well? I, I feel very comfortable. Um, I think we're, we're um, the situation is dynamic, so things are constantly changing. Um, we had a patient previously in this room who uh, who passed away and, and may have benefited from a non-invasive uh, uh, mode of ventilation. Um, it's just it just it feels safer. Um, a lot of times we get scared to intubate people with uh, with pre-existing conditions, and uh, we're just scared that they may not be able to make it um, off the ventilator. So I feel safe. I feel better. I feel better for our patients. I feel happier for our patients that, that we're, we're able to give them this instead of uh, an EP2. Okay. I think we're all pretty proud of that patient that we never intubated. Uh, it was here for three days that uh, we had left the hospital alive, never having been intubated using a combination of high flow and chrome. Right? Yes, yes. And and there were many physicians that were, that were saying intubate, intubate, intubate. And, you know, the numbers say intubate these people right away. And, you know, the guy didn't look like he, he needed to be intubated, so we, so Dr. Feeney said no, put his foot down and said no, and said, let this guy, let this guy tone himself, and, uh, you know, he never had to be intubated, so that was a success, you know, that's he great. walked out of this hospital. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's key. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. So, um, Adrian, are there any other um, important facts around using BiPAP on a ventilator or in the high flow use? that you want to make sure people know about um, as a respiratory therapist? I think I think in this mode, and Dr. Feeney touched on it earlier, is that uh, is that when they're on pressure support, um, we don't have to set a rate. 
So you just set 12 of uh, pressure to pour instead of people five when there's no rate. Um, oftentimes, uh, even with regular patients, when we set a rate and they're somewhat alert or they start to come off their sedation a little bit and wake up, they get a little desynchronous with the vent. And even those patients, sometimes air will escape around the cuff. And since there is no rate set for this patient, um, the, the, the chances of desynchrony are less. And so we're not so much worried about air escaping around the mask as we would, you know, a patient that we did set a rate on. Um, so that's one of the benefits of using this mode. Great. Okay, thank you. Yep.